people who wear badges are 100% sexier than those who don't. <laughs> and I've got a lot of badges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway guys, I am catching up. I'm very close to being caught up with uh, Young Justice. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'm happy. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get on to the latest episode that I've watched known as The Hunt. So when we start off we see the Reach are still in the war world and however sadly, well actually probably fortunately in our case because we're trying to avoid our world domination. Fortunately I guess for us but not fortunately for the Reach they don't have all the kind of logistics and technology or something required uh, to be able to actually run the world world. They do have the power source, but by the sound of things, it's something along the lines of like, only Mongol can control it, I guess. One thing that we do now know is that the team has been held captive as opposed to being just kind of like shoved out the airlock and killed. Instead they were kept in stasis and they were being kept on the war world. And of course this whole episode is about breaking them out. We start off we see Arsenal who's still on the war world. He's still evading the team for being persecuted but mainly he's trying to avoid like the Reach and Lex Luthor because he doesn't want to be back put back into a tube again. This episode I think is really powerful with him because we get to see truly the fear because he's basically being around some of these guards and being just like I'm not being put back in a tube and it's kind of anger but you can kind of sense that he's just kind of fearful that he's gonna get put away again even though he kind of puts on like a mask of being just like I heard everything and pretty much everyone kind of gets in on this big fight scene and what's interesting is in this situation Unlike many of the other situations, they definitely feel have the feeling of being ganged up on. Not only are other members of the team that have not been captured, uh, Nightwing and McGann, not only are they after the Reach, the Runaways have been pulled into it by Lex Luthor, uh, Mongol at one point is reawakened and joins in the fight, and everyone's kind of ganging up on the Reach. And what's also interesting is while we haven't seen the fight scene yet, we presumably will soon, uh, we can s see that there's a lot of tension between Ty and Blue and they don't even see each other, just Ty's just like I'm going to get rid of the scarab and I'm going to make the Reach pay for what they did to my friend. And oh, this is one of the many things where I was just like, this is like FMA with the awesome character relationship things. Lex manages to pull the runaways, as I like to call them, uh, from the title of the thing, which is Static and Everyone, into uh, rescuing them from the Reach as kind of like their way of getting back at them. And then they uh, end up uh, finding where everyone wa is, but we've got Black Beetle again. However, Arsenal's there to kind of give them guidance and give them kind of a way to um, figure out how to do things to just kind of keep him off balance as opposed to just being, just going, pff, trying to hit him. Meanwhile, Dick and McGann are still trying to find where the team is, so McGann's using like a, um, psychic powers to try and trace them, and it's just having issue and everything. And they end up kind of getting into this kind of nice little moment where they both kind of start blaming each other. And McGann's just like, oh, it's all my fault. If I knew about Green Beetle, then I wouldn't have told you to trust him, and then Jaime wouldn't have been in this situation. Whereas Nightwing's like, oh, well, if I told you that Calder uh, was undercover, then you, then, like, if I told everyone, then it would have been fine. This whole uh, tragedy of with Calder wouldn't have happened either. And they kind of have this really cute moment where they're just like, oh, okay, we both blame each other, but we've got to do the work. And I really like that because I think, if nothing else, I like it because 
it makes everything seem less dark and fore foreboding. Don't get me wrong, dark and foreboding is very good drama and I adore dark and foreboding, but at the same time it can get to the point where if everyone's crying then just and then you have this kind of shock event, it doesn't really become a shock anymore because it's just like, oh, there's something else for people to start crying about. So I kind of like it when you have just little sparks of, eee, things are nice. So see, again, um, being cute with Sphere. And, sorry to say this, but it is time for another Beast Boy rant. The reason is, I'm just really annoyed, and I don't even think, I'd, I'd like to think that this isn't even me ranting about the fact that there's no Beast Boy, but the fact that it just doesn't make any sense anymore. Because, we have had McGann being kidnapped, being detained for, I don't know how long, for, a f I think it was at least for a month or so, I think it would have been. If nothing else, it was definitely a few weeks. And then, she comes back. And over the course of that period of time, the only emotional kind of response that we've seen from Beast Boy and McGann together is that both of them were, walked onto the bio ship together near the end of this episode. And I'm just like, um, come on, give, give us something to work with here. We have had nothing, just nothing. And I'm just really angry about it because he is by far my favourite character of all time and we just not seeing him. Uh, after the whole situation and everybody's freed, we um, finally get to talk about what actually happened and the the truth is given to Nightwing about the situation, about the fact, like obviously he knew the Blue Beetle turned on him, but he didn't know about Arsenal opening the airlock and endangering everyone else. Of course this was good because that meant that he could escape and people weren't killed and stuff like that and ultimately you, you could say, like, indirectly, he helped to make sure that everybody stayed alive. But at the same time, it's very irresponsible, and thus he gets fired by Dick. Well, he doesn't get fired, but he's, as soon as they get to the planet, then he's fired. So then he just, like, kind of quits. And I think it's, it's kind of fitting of him. I definitely still want to see him around in the show, but I think it's kind of fitting for him to be kind of dismissed but to still kind of play a part outside the team because it's not really his kind of thing, I guess. It never really was. It was just, he, he wasn't there because he wanted to be part of the team. He wanted to be there because he wanted to be able to get vengeance on them. In fact, you could even argue that the only reason that he joined the team is that he didn't want to be captured, but he wanted to be able to exercise, um, like, he wanted to be able to throw grenades, essentially, at Lex Luthor, but be able to hide behind someone when Lex Luthor came but after him. Uh, and what ends up happening is he ends up running off with the runaways until he finds out about Lex Luthor. So at this point it definitely seems like the runaways have quit because they realise that they've been used by him because he just wanted them to provide a distraction so they could he could steal the crystal's key. But the question I guess I have is, even though none of them are falling in Lex Luthor, does that mean that they're going to become a group? Or is um, Red Arrow going to go the old season one way and just go solo? The other thing that kind of happens is we see the Reach. Mainly it concerns them trying to maintain their public image. So of course we've got a continuation of the very end of the last episode where we see Blue being the whole hero and everything. At this point, where a little kid came up saying, um, what about the Justice League? And they were just like, they're terrible people. And I just wanted to cry. That was just, that was just, oh, just crushing dreams. It's terrible. And the last thing that I have to talk about with the Reach is Gordon Godfrey and shock horror. I don't hate him. I, I didn't think it was possible. The reason is because he, uh, has finally caught on to the fact that these guys are probably not good guys in the fact that uh, they lied about how many ships they have, they were hiding tons in the ocean which were revealed when they were using it to protect um, Earth against the war world's attack and I really like it because now he's using like his powers of just like observation and his interrogative kind of technique 
against the bad guys and that's why I don't hate him. I'm so happy, I'm so proud of you Gordon, you made me not hate you. Anyway, I think that's about it. Uh, this was a pretty good episode, as I said before, really really angry at the lack of Beast Boy because now it's almost getting comical how much they're leaving him out. Uh, but then again, I mean, it's it's near the end of the season, so I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm going to be just like, Oh my god, we're going to find out all the backstory over the five years in one episode. Yeah, I know that's not going to happen, but I just find it kind of weird that they're not even considering him. Pretty much just standing there, not even doing anything. <sighs> but yeah, uh, anyway guys... I'm so close to catching up. I'm so happy because I want to catch up and then I want to do cosplay and then I'm, I've got a couple of really special videos that I'm going to do in between some of my reviews. <sighs> um, yep. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like and everything. And I will hopefully see you guys maybe tomorrow or even, uh, depending on when I get my stuff done. Regardless of when my next review is, I hope from now until then and forever in your life that you will remain asterisk. Bye.